Hey guys, RC here, back with episode 3 of Starter's Orders 7 Redo. Uh, if you're just tuning in and missed the first two episodes, we did have a restart due to some technical problems with the game. Uh, the game would not load out of the third slot. I don't know if it's something with that slot. Don't know if it was just that save was corrupted in some way, shape, or form. The only way I could get past it was to load the backup, revert to the backup, and then usually, you know, usually two or three times it would reload. So uh, anyway, uh, we have Van Doesburg. We've been running him. Uh, he's won one race. It was a good race to win. $100,000 race overseas. Uh, he did finish seventh in his last outing. And we were looking for a race for him to enter. So there is a race tomorrow. So if we hop into this uh, tomorrow, there we go. Uh, we are coming into the Class 2 Handicap uh, on turf, 0 to 100 ratings. And we are entered in this race. So we're not the favorite, which is disappointing, because we're right below that 100 mark. And we are a long shot. Wow. And I forgot to hire that dude again. You guys are killing me. All right, well, let's go race. Uh, yeah, I, I really don't know what to do with this horse. I, I knew he wasn't going to be good coming in. You know, that we probably jumped the gun a little bit by racing this year. But... You know, I wanted something in episodes for you guys other than just skipping ahead and breeding and buying yearlings for three or four years. All right, he's he's riding as a stalker. He's in that second tier. There's a little charge there. He gets to the rail, and I think that's where he's going to get toasted by the field. That entire trail pack burst up into contention. And we are a furlong and a half away, and we are way, way behind the rest of the pack. About three lengths behind uh, Foreign King there. So, yeah, even in a handicap, carrying weight. We're probably carrying more weight because of the higher rating, and that did not do us any favors. But I think if you're not going to be a Class 1 or Class 2 runner, you kind of have to make your way in, in these handicaps and, you know, condition races. If you think otherwise, let me know because I certainly don't know. One and a half lengths behind the trail horse. Weakened and eased up when beaten. So that's not a trait that I really want. I'm not sure what I would breed that with to get rid of it. So I think I'm done with this horse. I think we're done with this horse. The only thing the only thing I mean he's a group three winner so he has a, he has a win. I mean I could put him out there as a, as a inexpensive stud and just have money come in on him, right? But that's back-to-back -back last place finishes. A class one, a class two. Now, it was a class two handicap, so I don't know if they have class three handicaps. And I don't know what we're gonna have the rest of the year. There is a seven furlong, I suppose we could push him. Class one. No, I don't even want to go into a class one. That was a class two handicap, so we want to stay away from those. I think what we want to go into a grade three if we're going to do anything. So it would be like that race there, but that's just in a couple of days. All right, well, let me move ahead a little. You know what? I tell you what. Let's do this. We're going to put him out to grass. I would put him out to grass if I had the uh, field space. We'll upgrade that. 
We'll put him out to grass. And let's call it a season. Since I just started the episode, we're certainly not going to end there. Let me get to the end of the year, and we will come back. And again, as we get more horses that are actually running races, then I will start skipping. You know, I'm already skipping all the auctions, but I still want to come back. I want to look at the horses, and, uh, you know, we'll go through those, and uh, that'll take up at least some episode time. And then we can see if we've got any horses for next year. So we're going to call this this year for racing complete. Uh, we've sent our horse out to the out to pasture for the rest of the season, and we'll decide what to do with him after we look at our new two year olds coming in next year. So I'll see you guys back here in a second. <laughs> All right, we are back. I think depending on what we look like money-wise, and we should look okay because we're probably going to sell at least 20, 22 of these horses, I would bet. Um, we should be sitting on money. I'm probably going to move all these brood mares for the most part to, you know, in fact, let's see, rating... I'm going to keep those. Let's do this. Um, I can't move to the main stable because the main stable's full. All right. But I'm going to get rid of these breeding mares, and then we may start trying to buy a handful of better ones with, you know, 60, 70, 80 ratings minimum. Uh, but let's look at the racing stable. All right. So we have the one three-year-old. Okay, so his stamina has gone up, and we're looking at, if I could see, 50, about 55%. So he's in that 1.1 to 1.2 rating, which is right in his breeding window, and a group three. So... Okay, and then let's take a look here. So his potential still has not gotten over 50, but it's it's there. I think I want to still run him a little bit. So we'll keep him, and then let's go through our two-year-olds. We're going to auction that one. Now this one's interesting. Number one dance has high battling ratings. You don't normally see that. Potential's not really there. Extra speed is right on the cusp of that 75. Real solid enthusiasm. I just don't know about that one. I'm going to say no. This horse is very similar to the one that we just had, right? The one that we're, we've been running. His constitution's not quite there. He actually has a little more cruising burst. His extra speed is right up there at 70. Now, his enthusiasm and finishes is only at 50, but consistency is there. Let's hold on to him, at least tentatively, until we see what else we've got. Uh, as you can see, I'm putting the horses up for auction. I'm only looking at the ones that, that maybe I've got some interest in. So, now this is one I, tip, I typically would not keep it. The potential's up there. It's near 70. It does have really good, almost 80, 75 extra speed rating, but the enthusiasm is real low. But it does have a normal disposition, so it's not laid back. So let's maybe hold on to this one, at least, at least to think about it. Okay, what about this one? Real low potential to start, but could get up to 60. And then maybe a little bit more. Eh, I'm going to say no. You know, there's a little bit there, but again, the, the, the speed out of the gate right now is just at 50. I don't think that's going to work. And what I'm looking for from you guys is let me know if I'm on the right track. Are you, would you interpret that horse the same way I do? So let me know in the comments. Okay, what about this one? He's already at 50 potential. He can get up to 60 
and then we might be able to push that a little bit. Very good confidence. 80 extra speed. Enthusiasm's a touch low. That's another one I'm going to put in the possible column. Now, I think this is one we might have to consider. So I usually look at Constitution, but all that means is he can race more often. So if he has, this means he would have to take longer breaks, maybe two or three weeks instead of, you know, maybe three or four weeks, maybe five weeks instead of two to three weeks on the, on the easy training mode. But he has potential already at 50, high confidence, 70% extra speed, solid enthusiasm, I'm gonna keep, I think I'm going to keep that one, Amthal. And here's another one that we may look at. So we're, we're already at 55 potential, good confidence, 80 extra speed, 100% finish application, kind of like that. And it actually has solid speed right now. I think uh, Kashmir Brown goes into the yes column. Ooh, I think this could be a possible horse. Now, the Constitution's really low, but we're just short of 50% potential now. We could push 70, and that might get past 75 with some wins. Confidence is high. We're already at 75 plus extra speed, enthusiasm, finish, consistency. I think that goes into the hold column. So let's go back and revisit the ones that we have decided to possibly keep. So Mr. Stickler, now that I'm looking at him compared to some of the other ones, I'm a little less impressed. Golden Veal, Golden Veil. I really don't like that. Uh, that is finish application and the low enthusiasm. I'm going to get rid of her. I'm going to get rid of her. Dynamic Rhythm. The enthusiasm's still down. Let me think about that one a little more. Amthal, I think we definitely keep. That's going to be one we're going to race. Because this isn't really our year. This, you know, I think next year now is the year that we're going to shoot because we'll be able to buy the top flight yearlings, and that's going to lead to some better horses to choose from. I think Cashmere Brown we go with. I think third half we give a good run to. I think Amthal we go with. So that's three. So I tell you what, we're going to keep those three. Dynamic Rhythm. Let's go ahead and auction that one off. Mr. Stickler. Yeah, let's go ahead and auction him off. Let's skip the day. All right, we're at 24 million. We kept three of our two-year-olds, and we have our three-year-old. So I think that's a, a good place to start this year. Now, what I also want to do, we'll come back in just a second, because I want to get rid of some of these brood mares. All right, so we've sent all but three of our mares back to the stable and then auctioned them out. So basically what you do, if you're not familiar, if you have room in your, in your stable, in your racing stable, uh, you return to the main stable, and then you get the option down here to do the auction and everything else. Uh, if that was grayed out like we saw earlier, it means your racing stable is full. You either need to sell some or expand it. In this case, I didn't want to spend the money to expand it, so we've done this. So we are good to go here. Uh, I think let's spend a little bit of money not an exorbitant amount like that's two million dollars i'm not going to do that this one's two hundred thousand 
That's in the that's 73. And 98.6. So we'll do that. We'll breed them with some better stud horses. Not great, but you know, still. And then let's go back to the racing stable. Oh, and you can see the brood mares in there. I don't know if those go up for sale at the breeder sale or the next day. Let's skip a day and find out. The next day, it looked like. So we didn't get a lot out of those. Those horses brought in, yeah, under under four thousand dollars a piece. They were all old, or you know. But anyway, but you can see what some of our horses went for: uh, two point three million, two point two. Uh, this was must have been one of the ones that we bred. 1.4, 2.3, 6.65 was probably one we bred. So you can tell the difference. Uh, the ones that are going going for you know a half million to three quarters of a million. Those are the ones we've been breeding with low end uh, mares and studs. And then the ones that we were buying at you know 200. 40,000 those are going now for 10 times as much for 2.3 million so that's where you're going to make your money now somebody had mentioned to me once they said well it's too easy to make money because we're making money like this but look how few horses we get that are really run worthy right so it takes a lot of money so 23 million is not going to buy us very much in the way of yearlings and broodmares that are real quality plus running our barn speaking of speaking of let's get out of here let's come to the barn and so we already hired the help but let's go ahead and go high on everything here i think you have to go high staff level level in order to open the paddock at the track i think because we had the help here but that's what I've done, the two in conjunction, to actually get the paddock notes to open up. So we'll see. I don't know. Uh, do we want to buy? We've got room for 14. I think we're fine. Actually, we've got room for 26. So I think we're fine right now. We don't need the extra room. So we're good there. All right, we do need, because it's a new year, right? We need to go get our jockeys again. So we've got uh, Roman, Montalvo. Let's go ahead and retain our apprentice here. And I guess you should do that on the first day. So I would like honest feedback, but it's much more important to get the skill, I think. But there's there's our winner, 90% skill and a high, uh, high honesty. We're going to do that. I'm not so worried. Oh, and we do want to auto book him. I don't think I did that last year, did I? So we probably didn't even get our jockey. Well, live and learn. If you click the auto book and it turns dark green, as long as your job, you know, you, the, if you've got your jockey on retainer, he will race your horse unless you're having two races, two in the same race, two on the same day at different tracks that he can't get to. But even if he's already been hired by someone else, you do get the, uh, he gets bumped to your horse automatically. All right, so let's take a look here. So Van Doesburg we're saying is one one to one two and i'm gonna go a couple of days there we go all right so let's go look at him so we want to look at a one one now i don't know this is what i don't know starting a second year with a horse because this is the first time i've done that do you kind of have to learn the groups and everything again or 
being that we've already figured out he's a grade three at best, is that kind of what we need to look for? So like here's, here's a class one grade three. Now that is international. Let's go ahead and enter him. He won international last time. That's where he won his big race at Kranji, right? So let's do that. Uh, Amthal and all the rest of these are, we're looking at five or six. So Amthal at six furlongs. And let's go ahead and book in Kentucky. We'll enter the horse there. And then let's go ahead, that's January 11th. So let's come down to the end of January and let's run in Monticello. All right, this one, Cashmere Brown, same situation. Five or six furlongs. Tell you what, let's start with a five. Risk of showers, Colts, let's go here. Now what you also can look for is if you have a little R, a little white circle next to the race, means one of your other horses are is already entered into it. So pay attention to that. And then we'll scroll farther down and yeah, we don't want to go there. How about this one? January 26th. We'll enter that horse. And you can see the jockey's getting locked in. Actually, you know what? I want to remove that horse. And we want to look at a six furlong in the second race. But we do want to go farther down. Possibly a class one grade three. Wouldn't mind that. And these are all un well, they I think we need to run our maiden, yeah. See, here's that little look marker that means you you already have a horse. All right, let's go here, Farmington. All right, so that'll give us a five and a six. And then we'll do the same thing here. Let's do a six and a five. So let's come back up. Does this horse, a slower track, slow, so turf is slower than dirt, I think, but then a rainy track would slow it down with the mud. So let's, let's go here. That's going to be a six furlong. And then we'll go to a five further into the month. We don't want to go to Dubai. How about this one here? All right, so that gives us two races per horse. Now, I want to watch Van Doesburg run, and I'd like to watch these run their first race, you know, just to see them, I suppose. Although, we, you know, it does take the time, and as we get more horses, we will probably not watch Maiden runs. But let's go ahead and get, well, let's save because we've done a lot of work here. So let's get to the next race. Skip day. And I'm looking, and we are the favorite in this one. So this is the first race as a three-year-old for Van Doesburg. And we're pretty solid favorites here. The tipsters like us. And as you can see, now we can see the paddock notes. So moving well, very fit, prime to go. I am going to go ahead and put a max win on her. Uh, let's put two and go race. Let's get some there, Van Doesburg. It is on turf. We're running second from the rail with the yellow hat. A little bit of a slow break, but they quickly recover. So that looks very similar to last year as a, as a two-year-old. Immediately goes out to the lead. That's interesting. Now, this is a longer race, remember, so we will speed through this. 
keeping a good pace. I hope we're not just burning ourselves out. Coming up on the five furlong pole. We've got a good stretch on the field. Here comes number two, more than ready. All right, coming up near inside three, we've got the number eight horse, Bramble Bear, closing in on us. I don't know that we've made a charge yet. So at the two furlong, he's caught us, but we haven't faded. Now, do we have anything to pick it back up? We've got one furlong to go. We've got two horses closing, including Transact. And I think this is our fade. Yeah, I don't see anything. I don't see anything in there. We faded off to fifth. All right. Well, you know, that's that is what it is. Lead early, lead and four lengths clear halfway and faded. Okay. Struggled in this class. Okay, so there's some key information. So let's get out of there. All right, so that was a class one grade three. So they're not saying the distance was bad. So let's look at a one one. But we don't want... First, I need to find, okay, there's our late declaration cutoff. London is a class one, grade three, and we just said we were outclassed at that. I've got a class two handicap that goes up to 120. This one goes up to a 90. I think, so that's a class three. I think that's where we got to go just to judge what we're going to do. So we've got a rating of 90. We'll be equal with Dame Fontaine as the highest rating. And we're going to carry equal weight to the Philly. All right, well, we'll see how that goes. All right, we are back out for Amthal. And I tell you what, we're at, we're at 30 minutes. So let's just watch how they finish. Because, you know, these are maidens. That's just, you know... No, because you guys will get mad at these. This is the first time we've seen these new ones raised. So let's watch them. Why not? Long shot. Big long shot. And it's raining. There's our yellow helmet. And we break out to the early lead. Quickly open up a distance and move to the rail. The number one horse, Monsoon Music. That's an appropriate name for today. And Garton King, they're riding as stalkers right on our haunch. All right, 2.8 furlongs, and Garton King makes a run past us. Monsoon Music is coming up on the outside. Looks like we're fighting back here at the two furlong pole. We do have some horses closing, and they are closing fast. Queen's favorite and Lind Lindrick Lady at the one furlong, and we are getting outpaced by the front runners, and we are not going to finish anywhere near the top of this one. That's going to be a poor finish, and we faded near the tail into the pack. Yep, yeah, ran green, so that's you know that's okay. Um, very green and should improve. So the distance isn't an issue. We'll figure that out. We just need to get them in form. And that could be that we ran them too soon. Maybe you wait till February to run them and give them that month in training because they don't start training until January 1st. So this was a raw, raw race. All right, we've got two going today. Cashmere Brown is in, and I don't know if we're the joint favorite or not. And third half is not a favorite. So let's get into these. All right, Cashmere Brown, not the joint favorite. Fourth in the pecking order. 
it is a nice day. We're riding on the outside here today. Five furlongs, quick break, immediately settle into a stalker position and possibly fade a little bit more on the outside. Now this is a short run, only five furlongs. We're all the way at the back of the pack. Are we going to have anything? Two furlongs. I think he just fell too far back. Come on. All right, he's leading that, but at one furlong, he's not making a move. Well, there's a little move coming, but too little too late, I think. He's going to get up into fourth, but no way does he have enough. And he holds on to fourth position. All right, so he can't run that far back. That's for sure. Steady start, rear halfway, always outpaced. Now, did he run green or anything? He did not run green. Could have settled better. Okay. Um, settling is a... Settling is an issue. Where did I see about settling in here? I want to say settling was a big problem. I'm looking, I'm looking. Oh well, I don't remember. I will look for it. But there was something about settling that was not... Oh, here we go. Did not settle. Could have settled better. This is how well they follow the jockey's instructions and how distracted they get during the race. All right, so let's take a look all right third half let's go watch her race and then we want to go look at that horse's ratings all right pretty horse pretty gray came out a little slow moves out right on the tail end of the lead horse bubbly braveheart she's got the pace it looks like to keep track here in the early going now the big thing is can she hold up over the entire race? All right, there's the two furlong pole. They're neck and neck. Are we going to see a burst here? He eases out in front by neck. Gets it up to half a length at the furlong pole. And I don't know if we're pulling away or if Bubbly Braveheart is fading. Nobody else is running with us. And there's a pushback by Braveheart. But we're going to take the Maiden here. First place finish. And that is good. That is very good. Form book, uh, we picked up $8,194. Well placed early, disputed lead halfway, driven out, ran green. So we still ran green and won by a length. So that's positive. Ran very green, lovely horse. That's a good indicator. All right, so let's get out of here. All right, so third half, let's kind of look here rating-wise. Third half is the one that I think might be the best of the bunch. Won't be able to run a lot, low constitution. Cashmere Brown. All right, the notes here said could have settled better. Laid back. Okay, I don't like that. But we don't want, oh, you know what? That was something I forgot to look at. Normal, laid back, and normal. All right. <clears throat> None of them were excitable. That's good. Confidence, enthusiasm. All right. So we'll see how that goes. We may need some... Uh, we may need us, uh, you know, blinders or, you know, we may need a pacifier uh, to kind of help keep that horse focused. We'll evaluate that moving forward. I'm going to go ahead. We do have second races booked for most of these. Third half got booted out of its next race because it won. So we're still looking at the same distance. Let's get her booked into another or him, him, her. So let's look at a six furlong. 
and we got the coup to sprint in South Africa. We did well there last time, and this is a big one. Two three hundred and seventy-five thousand. Do we take the plunge? It's a class two conditions race. Or do I go for the class one, grade three? Class one. Let's do this one for money. <laughs> and then we'll, you know, if we do well, if we win, then we can, you know, know that we're possibly a class one horse. So we're going to go ahead and book that one. We did well in South Africa last year. So we'll come back next episode. We've got three races at the end of January, and then we'll see about rebooking everybody. Uh, probably let them rest about a month. But uh, guys, hit that like button. I think we deserve it with our first win. $8,194 out of the gate. Thank you very much. Amthal, a little worrying, but uh, we'll give her a couple more runs, and then uh, we may just cut bait on that uh, if she doesn't show what I'm hoping for. I, I, I kind of like her ratings. I just think maybe we need to give her some time. Hit the like button, subscribe, and we'll see you next time, guys. Bye.